Hey you guys, how you doing? Welcome back. Welcome back to Nicola Land and Alison. I am so excited to be back with they're quickly becoming some of my favorite people because listen, the information is just delectable. It's rich, it's good. So welcome back to Angie and Kayana. And today we are continuing the conversation that we started last week. And of course, you know we are now doing the series The Battered. So today we are talking about types of abuse. Yo, I hope you're ready because there's a lot of information to share. Those of you who haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Those of you who have not shared the link or who are not part of Nicola, come on, join, join, join because we have a lot, a lot more information to share with you. But today, let's just get into the topic for today. Types of abuse. Let's start with you, um, Kiana. Just list, at least some of the types of abuse for us and um, so we could just move on from there. Okay, so hello everybody, I'm back again and today we'll be talking about types of abuse. And just off the top of my head, some of the most common types of abuse in intimate partner violence are physical, physical abuse, which you know, which is the battering. And it's, I don't want to go too much, or should I go into the details now or just... Not quite yet, so you could just uh, start listening to yourself and then I'm gonna like, yeah, break it down. Okay. Well, you all break it down. <laughs> So there's physical abuse, which is the battering, and there's sexual abuse, there's psychological or emotional abuse, there's financial abuse, and there's also social abuse. Alrighty, um, Angie, just to confirm, did she list all of them or do you want to add anything to it? <laughs> Don't forget to turn on your mic. Thank you. We have financial and economical abuse, and we have verbal abuse as well. All right. Thank you so much. So, you guys, what I, what I want to really for you to do is, you could just take turns and let's just make a... We might have to break this into two um, sessions, I suspect, because there is just a lot to cover. But um, let's just start with the more common ones. We're going to start with that, and then we're going to go... Um, just press it downwards to see how much we could cover what each of them entails. Let's start with sexual abuse. How is there even sexual abuse in a relationship? You're, you, I'm like, I'm with the person. If they want sex, couldn't they just ask for it? How does it even come to the part that it's abuse? Like, you know? Yeah, well, we, we have oh. the sexual abuse. And then you have that in marriages which is very questionable because a husband can rip a wife because as long as it is not sensual then it is considered abuse because sex is supposed to be something mutual between two partners and you're supposed to enjoy it but if you feel uncomfortable with some of the, the, the positions that are requested of you and it is still forced on you that is sexual abuse it should be something that you both agree on that you can enjoy. Wow, like I'm even afraid to go into details with this because I feel like if we start going into details with this specific one that this is going to be like the whole, the whole series. Because I'm thinking like so many people have so many different ideas as to, oh, but if you're married, then you know, it can, it's not a rape and whatnot, whatnot. But like, let me just pause for a course here. Let's move to the next one. Before we go into depth with this, I think we're going to at least try to cover two today. Let's try to cover sexual and let's try to cover verbal as well. Because I don't think it always starts with sexual. I think it starts early on. So y'all tell me, where does it usually start? And then we're going to go further down into sexual because I have questions, y'all. So um, let's talk about verbal abuse for a while. Does it start with verbal abuse, Kiana? And tell me what verbal abuse is. Okay, so verbal abuse is basically um, saying hurtful things to, to the individual, speaking about their appearance. Um, for example, a lot of times you find in women, let's just say women, um, their weight fluctuates. A lot of women can relate to that. And you have a partner who, who's all constantly talking about your weight and, and telling you you're ugly, you, um, nobody don't want you, nobody will ever be with you. You know, um, 
in intimate partner abuse those things are being said to the victim and again i don't want to bring it down to only women but the same for men sometimes the woman will tell the man um you short and he might be insecure about his height and those things hurt the individual the whole intent of verbal abuse is to bring down your self-esteem to, to hurt you to make you feel like you're worthless so these are some of the things that can be said it's an attack on 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 you on your character or it could be you know verbal abuse is so ticklish we might not really think it's um real but it's it's real it, it could be sim as simple as saying um like nobody will ever want to be with you or you know it could be those little things um that is verbal abuse i don't know if angie wants to add in a little bit more on the verbal part you know and by extension when meaningful things have been said to you if you already have a low self-esteem it's going to damage you quickly and more because from the verbal abuse imagine some a simple thing like i don't want to be your friend that is hurtful a simple thing like i do not enjoy your company why you think you are there don't you see you are my slave don't you see that i am just telling you what to do and you must obey my command you know and the things that are said you are not pretty you are black you are ugly you are not a good mother you cannot even satisfy me sexually you know and when these things have been said to someone that is very hurtful and that's where the emotional and the psychologically abusive behaviors i mean just follow quickly because when hurtful things are said to you it has a never negative impact on your mental psyche you are hurting and sometimes like i always talk about the mass and i will always talk about the mass sometimes you are hurting inside and some people have such a beautiful smile and when they smile you will never see the pain because god give them nice dimples beautiful teeth let me tell you when they smile ivory palace but yet the pain that is inside is excruciating and sometimes they do not have a vent to share it with. That takes me back to my question. Does it start with verbal abuse? Yes, I will say yes, it starts with verbal abuse. Now in some cases it doesn't necessarily follow a pattern to say verbal then physical then sexual. No, it starts somewhere. But in most cases it starts with, phys with verbal and into the physical. Now you see that physical abuse is very apparent. If somebody gives you a punch, automatically you will see it on your eye. You will see if your arm is broken, your 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 limbs are torn, your body is bruised. You will see it with the naked eye. And yes, somebody will quickly say that person is an is in a unhealthy relationship, and that person itself. But when it comes to the emotional and the psychological, it is not apparent as the physical abuse, and that's where the danger lies unless you don't open up or that person should get out of denial and seek help you know and seek help and the right help too not just anybody that you just go to anybody and people just give you advice north south east west but you need to be referred to someone who can help you a qualified counselor you know sometimes there are support groups that you can join and reach out and most of all you will be surprised to know that you are not alone because a lot of the times people believe that they are in this alone and that is not so and it's because of the shame you know the shame that comes with it you feel unwanted you feel neglected you feel abused in in a sense that it's it's unfamable you cannot even understand what is happening to you you know and that's where the danger lies when you lose hope you confuse you just there floating you cannot even live you just existing you know and when it reached that point that is so dangerous because that's when sometimes you have people contemplating suicide they're having suicidal ideations and they prepare it in such a way that they want to go with their children too because they don't want their children to stay behind and suffer like they did so they have it plotted 
you know and the sad thing is for when the plan is effective and takes place without anybody seeing the signs that's why we need to look for the signs you know and there are signs for for suicidal ideations that person will always say before I before you go into that ng i i, I think that you're going down like rapid pace let's take it slowly Woo! um yeah <laughs> Um, let I want to talk a little bit more about um, the phys- the verbal abuse before we go like more into like the effects that it has on the individual. Um, you know, you enter into you're in this relationship. Um, I'm I'm trying to think. I'm trying to get into. It's probably a dangerous road to go down, but I'm trying to get into the mind of the abuser. And I'm saying that you know, um, if. Does the does the abuser truly feel that way about the person that they're abusing? Do they like honestly think that the person is worthless, or is it that just is it just an attack on the person just to deliberately break the person down in their mind? And you don't want to go into that. Remember, it's all about power, power and control. So I cannot read the uh, perpetrator's mind or the abuser's mind. But you see, the thing is, it's to have authority over his partner or her partner. That's what it is. So when I control you, when I have you under my card, my authority, it's like I possess you. You belong to me. You are my possession. So if you don't want to add hair to my rules, that's how harsh it is. If you don't want to add hair to my rules, I'm going to make you add hair involuntarily by being abusive to you and tell you some real nasty things that you have never heard before. Sometimes you're in shock. Where did that come from? Can somebody actually conceptualize stuff like that to share on somebody that they proclaim to love? And I say proclaim because love does not hurt. Love does not hurt. So if you have a partner who is so abusive to you, how on earth can you tell me that you love me? How? And if oh, I may go ahead, Kiana, jump in here. To what she was saying, a perpetrator will never come and say, I am an abuser. <laughs> I love people. He will never say that. That's right. And like she's saying, the whole idea is to get you to the place that they want. And when they get you there, they literally break you down to pieces. You see like a brick and and the construction workers have to break down the wall and they use the drills and they break it down and the pieces fall that is literally what happens and like she says with the physical you can see the bruises you can see the scars on the body but with the verbal and the emotional you cannot see it but the damage is done on the inside and sometimes it reflects on the outside sometimes but again, some people become so good at hiding, masking. yes, and masking that it's really hard to tell. And, and I don't know if you've ever experienced that where you've met somebody and you just said, how are you doing? Or you just give that person a hug and the person just break down into break down. tears. It's because there are things on the inside that is not being talked about that when they get that little bit of comfort or that little bit of safety, they just break down and literally fall apart into your arms. So again, an abuser will not tell you, you meet a nice, beautiful woman and and she could be as confident as the prime minister. It doesn't matter how high her her level of, of, of his or her confidence is. The perpetrator sees that he pursues, you know, it's a relationship. You pursue that person, you see what you want, and he might not necessarily mean those things about her because, I mean, you will not be with somebody you're not attracted to or you don't see, you know, yourself being with that person. But again, the idea is to control them and get them to a place where now you have to do what I tell you to do and it's all about me and it's not about the two individuals in the relationship so that's what happens with the whole cycle of of intimate partner violence so you find a lot of selfishness on the abuser's side all he thinks or all she thinks about is 
myself. I am the most important person in the world. I don't care how you feel. It doesn't matter. So so you're saying someone is literally somebody myself here. Your promise will make me cry. So, um so someone is is coming into this relationship. They they see me. My good little self, I'm fine. And you're coming to me. You're pursuing me. And then you you destroy me. Isn't that like shouldn't that isn't that some sort of murder? Because you come into my life, I'm fine. You destroy my mind. You start off by destroying my mind. I don't understand. Like, what? I I, I, I can't go down that road because I, I can't get into the mind of that somebody that would like come with these intentions. Don't these these people? They're dealing. I think they're dealing with stuff themselves because how do you how do you even explain this behavior? How do you intentionally go into somebody? Is it that it happens along the way? Is it that they don't plan on being this way? What is it? What is it? I will not say intentional. What I will say, it may look like I am making excuses for a perpetrator, but hear this. These behaviors are learned involuntarily, right? For example, you have child witness, which we spoke about previously this little girl or this little boy sees their parents behaving in an unseemly manner that's all they know that's what they see for years so they learn that behavior they grow up with it if there is not counseling like when they go to school the teacher will notice this behavior is not normal it's not acceptable because that child begins to bully the other children. So the parents will be called. Investigation will be carried out. And when a proper intervention is made, that child will be saved from that bad behavior. But if help is not received, this child will grow up into an adult with the behavior that was learned. And what does he or she do? Pass it on. So the cycle continues. Right. So I'm entering into this relationship and I, I'm taking some of my time with this verbal abuse because I think that in a lot of instances it, it just goes, people just let it pass under the rug and they're like, oh, that's okay. He was just having a bad day or she was just having a bad day. And then, yeah, bad days and then bad weeks and then bad months. So um, I'm entering into this relationship and this person finds me a confident person. And I, I keep going back to that self esteem series because. I just think it's so vital to enter into a relationship with, you know, um, your self-esteem. And not just a, like a, a show of confidence, but like your self-esteem intact. You, I, I'm entering into this into this relationship with, I'm dating this, this person. The person comes, woos me and everything like that. How do, how do I let you get to the point where this person is breaking me down? Kiana. Can I take a shot? Okay, so again, like I was saying earlier, or I should say that um, being a victim, show, it, it really shows that there has been some level of vulnerability that you have shown to the perpetrator. So he must have seen something um, or a way and again um remember we're saying that nobody's exempted from being in that situation so again you could be very confident or you could be like the most vulnerable person but when you're in a relationship you become vulnerable with that person because this is supposed to be your your safe space this is supposed to be your friend this is somebody yeah. that you're supposed to be sharing your life experiences with growing with that person so you become vulnerable with that person you might share things about your family life with that person or maybe areas that you are struggling with as an as an individual and you might lean on that person because come on the truth is we lean on our partner for for support and for help when we're going through difficult times and he or she is not equipped to deal with whatever you're going through so 
likes and you were saying earlier because of the learned behavior and the things that they have not dealt with that their issues personally to them it will be like why are you coming why are you you stressing me out so instead of trying to help because they cannot help the person so then it becomes a way of to them they might feel like they're doing you a favor but they're not doing you a favor they're adding more issues to you to your situation so again it, it really doesn't matter how confident you come into the relationship just the simple fact that you are vulnerable to your partner which is necessary in a relationship then him being damaged in a sense is not able to help or support or or be there for you the way a healthy a healthy partner is supposed to and that's why you know these things happen and you know sometimes um it is just continuous cycles because your your mother may have um experienced abuse and and then as a child it, it's not taken care of as a young lady you don't you don't seek help or you get counseling and then you might end up being with somebody who's similar to maybe your dad or your stepdad or the partner of your mother it, it's something that happens and you know it's it's just something that we need to be educated on because I, I, especially in St. Lucia I don't feel like we're educated on the effects of it and how we could help each other instead of judging each other about those kinds of situations. And just a gentle reminder, I don't want the men to feel that they are targeted because it's just more prevalent among women, but men experience IPV as well. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's um, just um, move on a little bit from um, verbal abuse. We're, we've touched a little bit on, on, on physical abuse, but I want to give physical abuse like a lot more time than what we have left um let's go we started off we started off talking about sexual abuse and i want to just quickly transition back into that um you know so you're with this person and and my question still remains that i'm with this person how does it get to the point that we're we're in a relationship and so number one probably i'm just using the example that we started off you've broken me you've broken my mind then sexual abuse i mean what's happening is this jail what's happening okay so um a lot of times the perpetrator will use sex as a way of comfort so after they're probably verbally abused you or physically abused you it's done in a way like i love you because this thing called sex is supposed to unite the souls together it's supposed to bring them together so to them it's like let's have sex and forget about it and a lot of times the women you know women we know our bodies we know how our body operates and the way the sexual abuse comes into play is we know that we need to be stimulated in, in in some way to to you know get things going you know but the men they just they don't care i want it when i want it if you sleep in and i reach home and i want it i want it and the woman might not necessarily be in the mood or the man might not necessarily be in the mood at the moment but remember you're broken down emotionally and those things have an effect on your body too so <laughs> it's it's just it's very deep it's really really deep and um especially in marriages people think well i'm married to you you're supposed to give it to me anytime because god ordained that and and that's mine you mine that's mine a lot of times that's how people people say it but no it's not okay if you know she's 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 not in the mood or he's not in the mood that is okay because while you're you're married it is still my body it is still his body you know a lot of times women go through different things different changes in their bodies and they might not be in a place where they can be sexual with their partner and the same for a man too so 
people say that you cannot be raped in a marriage because you're married but even you know it's it's very deep it's it's really sensitive it's a very sensitive thing because one might say i'm not married <laughs> but you know it's your body and if you don't feel comfortable or even sometimes the places the perpetrator might want to have those sexual acts in public you know on the bus or they want they want to touch you and do those kind of things these are not okay you you cannot be in so much control that you want it when you want it i mean it's not going anywhere it's going to your home so you can have it when whenever you you know the time is right or or it's it's an opportune time to have it but again the whole idea is abuse i want it when i want it and you're supposed to give it to me this is the mindset of the perpetrator wow you know this is this is such a serious conversation because you know there are so many misconceptions out there especially within the the christian um community and the way they interpreted what the bible said and you know that could be so very dangerous um in terms of how that plays on the person's mind the person that already has I was, I'm using sick loosely, a, a, a mind that is not well is sick, um, a sick mind um, to use those things and some, I'm just thinking of if I have a daughter, right, <laughs> or if I am like, I'm, you know, suddenly my mother brought me up, listen, I'm not exposed to any of this and then, you know, you just, you your life just dramatically changes from you were just this person, normal person. You woke up, you had your coffee. Next thing you know, you're in an abusive relationship. Where and I'm and I'm winding down this conversation, right? At least for the next time, um, we will continue. Um, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, I, this this conversation is definitely not over, Angie. Add something to this before we end. Let <laughs> me tell you, this this you cannot even fathom. You personally cannot even fathom this because, especially when you see you grow up in a wonderful environment with your family, you never saw anything negative. You know, everything was fruit and curry, like the trainees would say. And then you see this person you're attracted to, and you've seen all the right things about that individual. And where later on in the relationship, five years down the road you see me a monster you you have and you, you yourself you, you cannot even deal with your brain going shock a simple thing like i would like my tea unsweetened but you put sugar in yours and since you're drinking sugar you are compelling me to drink sugar but i'm used to drinking my tea without sugar simple as that just imagine that escalate from tea to the bedroom, making advances to you in public. You feel uncomfortable. I mean, if you feel uncomfortable, your partner have a right to tell you that, okay, let's iron things out when we get home, or we'll delete it and whatever. But to actually force somebody into sleeping with you and the woman's body must be prepared. You know, that's not like taking a, a, a pencil and putting it in a sharpener and you just sharpen it because the blade is already, you know, the blade is ready. But it takes more than that because of the way that God created us. And I know that we are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. We are royalty. We're supposed to be loved and be treated well so that we can pass this on to our children. So I'm encouraging everyone out there today, start afresh. Treat your partner with respect and love that others may look at your healthy relationship and emulate something positive from it. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to continue the conversation on the different types of abuse. Um, today we covered 
Well, in depth, I think to some extent we covered two of them and we touched on physical. As we um, proceed with the conversation, we're going to go further into the physical and we're going to touch some more. Um, I'm not going to try to venture too deep into this conversation anymore because it is already way, way over my emotional grade that I could actually handle. Um, but let me say to the viewers, thank you for watching. Please share the link, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, like, subscribe, or do all the good stuff. Um, let me thank Kiana and thank Angie again for making yourselves available and for sharing this information with us. Um, bye. <laughs>